New Jersey Representative Andy Kim said recently when he worked at the State Department, it banned him from working on Korean issues because of his Korean American heritage. The House Appropriations Committee looked at diversity and inclusion issues at the State Department Thursday. Ambassador Gina Abercrombie Winstanley is a diplomat in residence at Oberlin College. She's former U.S. Ambassador to Malta. She was a witness at the hearing. Madam Ambassador, thank you very much for coming on the program. What was the message that you wanted to take to that uh, committee hearing? Well, the most important message, I think, for everyone is that the State Department has looked at this issue for a long while, and the reality is we can get this done. We can make the movement that we need to make to improve our diplomacy by using three watchwords to frame transparency, intentionality, and accountability. And if we put those three things in place, we can stop talking about this issue and make progress. Why do you think we have not stopped talking about the progress? Obviously, we have continued to talk about it. Why have we not made the progress that is necessary to make to make the State Department what it should be? I believe that there have been good intentioned people, good intentioned policies, reports, recommendations over the years, but there has not been the confluence of the information, the recommendations, and the will to get it done. It's easy to overlook the, the health of an organization as you're out trying to fulfill its mission. But taking care of its people, those who do the work up and down the ranks, is the most important thing for success. And any strong business knows that. Now the Department of State, under new leadership, along with incredible support from Congress, and the American people are focused on getting this done. So to take your three-step plan, um, transparency, uh, it, it appears we're in that stage now. We're learning that this is an issue and, and we're learning exactly what the gaps are and potentially how to fill them. Intentionality requires what in your mind, Madam Ambassador? What would you like to see Secretary Blinken? What would you like to see uh, the other people that could do something about this at the State Department do to demonstrate that intentionality, ma'am? Sure. Well, I believe he has made clear from the beginning in his uh, hearing for confirmation his intent to focus on this issue. Other secretaries have done it, but he announced the uh, position of a chief diversity, equity and inclusion officer, someone who's going to give real attention from the secretary's office on this issue. And I think one of the challenges, certainly in my 30 years at the department, is that there have been lots of really good things done in one bureau, in a different office, at one embassy. But the coordination of all of those to really drill down into what works. And I know many people talk about, my, my grandmother certainly did, about scratching your left ear with your right hand. That gets to the intentionality. Use your right hand to scratch your right ear. And so not doing a program with the hope that it's going to have an impact, but get the data, make sure that we've got social scientists, those who can help us understand what works and what's going to get us there in an effective way. And the point of this is to improve the outcomes, to improve our diplomacy, to bring in a broader array of recommendations, of options, of perspectives that can help us solve the problems that the United States deals with internationally. The third item that you listed is accountability. Uh, what does accountability look like? Is that just accountability uh, of that person, of that diversity inclu and inclusion officer to the Secretary of State? Or are there other levels of accountability that will be important to fulfill this vision, ma'am? So for the Chief Diversity Officer, absolutely not. It is going to take the village. It's going to take the entire organization. The culture of the organization has to change so that we include not only incredible leaders, incredible managers, and good judgment and substantive knowledge, but also those who are working to bring along the entire workforce. That support for diversity, that support for inclusion, making sure that no one gets left behind. Everyone's not going to be a U.S. ambassador or, or Secretary of State but everyone needs to be able to reach their full potential. The United States, the American people demand that. And so accountability for what gets done and what doesn't get done. This conversation, ma'am, is similar to the conversation that's happening in the Defense Department right now uh, about how uh, the department proposes to improve diversity and inclusion in the general and flag officer ranks. Um, does, does the 
does the so, does the culture issue solve this to some degree? Does the just the idea that someone can come into the State Department regardless of his or her background and have a successful career, does that go a long way just to addressing this issue, ma'am? Well, recognizing that, I believe, will help a great deal. Uh, we do have people in the State Department with from a wide variety of backgrounds, of experiences. I often tell young audiences when I'm speaking that the most successful person in my class was someone who came in without a college degree, but with a lot of travel and real world knowledge that he was able to use in an expert manner. So we have that already, but it's a matter of making sure people do know that, understand it and know how to value it. Madam Ambassador, 30 seconds left. You'd mentioned outcomes. What are the successful outcomes that we can look at five years from now or at some point down the, down the path? I believe one of the first things we're going to see is a more representative organization. So you're going to see uh, people from all backgrounds in all ranks of the department. And I believe you're going to see more imaginative foreign policy. Madam Ambassador, thank you very much for joining me. It's great to have you on the program. My pleasure. Thank you.